Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at uh, the binomial model and, and specifically uh, convergence uh, in the binomial model. So there's a few uh, different um, binomial frameworks. There's Cox, Ross, Rubenstein, there's Tian, there's Jarrow Rudd, um, and of course, there's Lyson Reimer. Um, and I found this snippet of code uh, available uh, in R, in one of the R packages, in fact, F options. And um, that package is available uh, in the R environment. So um, uh, let's take a look at it here. Uh, now, there's a couple of ways you can uh, get access to online R resources. Um, one is uh, R Studio Cloud. Another interesting one is rdrr.io. So I'm going to take a look at that. And the first thing I'll do is uh, look for the package uh, F options. ggplot2 is a graphing uh, library and it's uh, um, one that's heavily used, um, but we're going to look at just F the options here, F options package. And we'll run and you'll see that uh, once we've invoked this F options, then the documentation uh, appears here on the right hand corner. Now we could take directly the snippet of code that I have here and run. Right, and maybe that uh, provides us with a little bit of uh, intuition as to what's going on. Let's just paste. Right, and let's uh, just execute. Okay, and basically what we have here, if we run through, is a comparison of the different uh, convergence uh, behavior of uh, varying binomial frameworks. So Cox, Ross, Rubenstein, Jarrow Rudd, and then Tian. And um, these are functions that are pre-written into the F options uh, package. And we can call them up and then run. And one of the nice uh, elements here is we can compare the price of an option where we've set out the value of the parameter arguments as being the stock price 100, the exercise 100, the time to maturity one year, 5% uh, uh, risk-free rate, the cost of carry, which is R negative Q. So the risk-free rate minus dividend yield is 0 0.5. And that would imply no dividend yield and we have sigma as 20%. So that's a volatility of 20%. And n is equal to n. So we go in steps of three up to, I think it's 100, right? Um, also here, uh, the option type is uh, an American pot. So P, lowercase p a uh, denotes American pot. And uh, it, it is optimal in this instance to exercise early. Okay, so that's one of the features here we might take into account. Now, when we look at the code here and then compare against the output, uh, you can see we have a convergence and um, we have uh, three different uh, graphs, three different series being plotted here. In fact, there's a fourth one as well, but we can see that at the low step size, we have a lot of uh, oscillation. And then as the step size increase, we get closer to uh, convergence. So the model's uh, values are closer together and closer to true uh, for all three, right? That's uh, one of the features. And when uh, we have four here, step four, step three, you can see um, that, uh, there is uh, more of spread between the different uh, estimations for the different trees. Okay, now another way of approaching this is we could go into F options package and we could look for the source codes. And then we could come down to, um, I think it's main, American, main man uh, binomial tree options. 
and we could open this again. This is now it's slightly different because we've slightly different values, but it's the same basic uh, code, right? Um, one nice feature here on this uh, portal is that we can run uh, the code in a Jupyter Notebook, right? So Jupyter Notebook, we normally associate more so with Python, but we could take this code here, uh, which is very similar to what we looked at just a moment ago, uh, with different argument values for the arguments, um, but otherwise it follows pretty much uh, a very similar track. We can create this in a Jupyter Notebook. That just takes a second. And then, uh, now normally we might break it into line one, line two, and observe, right, the incremental effect of introducing new code. So um, I'm going to skip all that and just put it into one, run it all together, and take a look at the output that we get. So I'll try that again. Okay, so it's loading the packages. And if we toggle through here, uh, we'll see the same code, the same output as before. So the value of the option for different step size going all the way up to 100 steps. And then in addition, we can see the convergence behavior of the different trees. And it's a little bit, the graph here is just a little bit better. And then we have uh, an option price tree. Now we can, later we'll look at more of the style of uh, presentations. But just for the moment, what we might concentrate here on is the behavior of the convergence. And one of the features we might note here is uh, it would appear that the, if we go back to the code for a moment, that the blue here is the Tian, right? So if we look at the, um, the uh, code for a moment, right? That the, um, yeah, that the, when we're graphing the Tian, tan option value going from three steps up to 100 steps, the we, blue is the color we use to track that. So this is the Tian model and you can see its uh, behavior seems to be a little bit better, right? Over certain range at least, it seems to be oscillating, especially from 30 up to 40, we seem to be oscillating less than the other models. Um, Jarrod, and uh, Cox Ross Room Science seem to track each other. Uh, perhaps uh, Jar Rudd, which is uh, red, sorry, green, uh, is, yeah, they follow quite closely each other, right? Um, and the, um, otherwise the uh, red, uh, a color here denotes Cox Ross Rubenstein. Okay, so that, that's some of the convergence behavior. That's important to address because sometimes we strategically pick a particular type of tree and the choice of tree is important. Now, the, the big tree uh, that we've left out here is uh, Lysen Rhymer. And typically with Lysen Rhymer, we see faster convergence at the lower step size. Now, because we don't have uh, that function is not available in F options, then we weren't able to invoke it here. Uh, also worth noting is um, the value that we converge to here is the Baron Addisey Whaley approximation, right? And Baron Addisey Whaley, uh, it's not the most accurate estimation of uh, the true value for the American option. Right. It is still an approximation. It's not like Black Scholes. Black Scholes is an exact, theoretically correct estimation for the European option. Baron Addisey Whaley is merely an approximation. So convergence to the Baron Addisey Whaley uh, estimate is not 
completely desirable. But you can see that for uh, a low step size, obviously Baron Odyssey Whaley uh, is probably giving us something uh, more correct. Also, we know from Amin and Kana that if you keep increasing the step size for the Cox Ross Rubenstein model, it converges to true. And Broidy the Temple 1996 uh, used the 15,000 step Cox Ross Rubenstein model as the, their uh, estimate of true. And that's what we will use a little bit later on uh, in, in uh, uh, more videos that will look at convergence behavior. Okay, but as a, an initial kind of um, just viewing and getting perspective, Baron Odyssey Whaley is quite handy. Okay, so there's a few options um, in uh, for executing our code and it has some merit. It's uh, if we toggle back through here, we can see we started by going to uh, rdrr.io snippets. We had a uh, uh, we were able to run our code directly, uh, but we we're also able to go into a Jupyter notebook right and uh, running the code as well and that offers a little bit more functionality and perhaps an enhanced graphing type experience as well okay 